An audio interface is an essential part of any tracks and playback rig. If you're gonna use tracks on stage, people have to hear them. And the best way to get audio out of your computer is an audio interface. It gives you multiple outputs, allows you to uh, send separate outputs to your sound console so your audio engineer has the most freedom and flexibility to adjust live in the moment. But how do you set up an audio interface? Particularly, what are the things you need to be concerned with or think about in a live performance scenario? Now, for the sake of today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up an audio interface and I'm going to be using the Play Audio 12 from iConnectivity. Now, this is a pretty unique interface that in that it has uh, really two interfaces in one. I can take and set this up and use two different computers to create a redundant setup. But for the sake of today, I'm going to treat it just like it's a just normal, simple audio interface. I should show you. Uh, let me flip this around so you can see on uh, the back of this guy uh, that this has 10 outputs on the back here. And on the front, uh, we have a headphone jack, which gives us our additional 11 and 12 outputs. But no matter what audio interface you use, uh, the tips that I walk uh, walk you through and show you in this video are going to apply. So let's start at the top here. This may sound like a duh, but the first thing we need to do is connect our audio interface to our computer. So in my scenario with the Play Audio 12, I'm using a USB connection and I'm going from here directly into my computer. Now on almost any modern computer, you're gonna need some sort of adapter, whether it's a powered USB hub uh, that's connected to your computer that your USB cable is connected to, um, or an adapter to take USB-A to USB-C, or there's a chance that your interface uses USB-C, maybe Thunderbolt 4, and you can connect directly to your computer. But the points I wanna make really quickly here up front is you wanna make sure it's a direct connection to your computer. Avoid, uh, yes, it could be a adapter, Adapter, it could be a USB hub, but avoid USB extenders. A question I often get is, hey, um, how can I extend my interface so that I can plug it into the stage snake uh, on the stage, but then keep it connected to my computer? And a lot of people start by thinking, hey, I'll buy a USB extender. I saw one on Amazon. It's like 10 bucks. And then my interface can stay back at the stage snake. And then I'll use the USB extender to get to my computer. Do not do that. It's not a good idea because the amount of data, uh, uh, how fast that data needs to travel from our computer to our interface, we need a direct connection. We need a USB connection. Again, it could be USB to an adapter, USB to a hub, but it cannot be USB to a USB extender. So keep your audio interface near your computer. And if you need to extend it, just grab an extra XLR cable to go from your direct boxes or to go out of your audio interface to your stage snake, okay? Uh, second thing we need to do, oh, and a note about that. When you're connecting your um, audio interface, make sure you're using the proper and approved uh, power adapter. Uh, particularly for uh, the Play Audio 12, there's a power adapter that comes with it. And I've heard a lot of stories of people having issues uh, and the issues that they've had are related to power. Uh, and the power issues that they've had are because they're not using the correct power adapter. They're using uh, like a one spot to, that they use to power their guitar pedals with and think they can plug it into their interface. So use whatever power adapter, whatever power supply has come with your interface, um, or you may potentially have issues uh, doing that. And I've heard issues with other interfaces, not just the Play Audio 12 that uh, are caused by people using the improper power. Okay, next, we're gonna move quickly. Number two, make sure you update your firmware. If your audio interface requires a driver, unlike the Play Audio 12, which is class compliant, so it just works. Um, if you need a driver, if you need control software like Oracle for X series, uh, make sure you update your firmware. So your interface is updated, make sure you have that control software or any drivers necessary. Okay, now over to the Ableton Live side where we're ready to have fun and ready to dive into Ableton Live. So let's go into Live's preferences. That's gonna be command comma. Next, we wanna to go to the audio tab here. Okay, so over on the audio tab, we're gonna first go and choose our interface. Now, we have the ability and option to set up inputs and outputs. Now, typically in live performance, unless you happen to be processing a vocal, doing live vocal tuning through Ableton Live through your tracks rig, which um, uh, that requires a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. Unless you're doing that, you're probably not using your audio input device. So what I typically do is I go and set this to no device. Now, on a PC, you may need to choose your driver type. You may have some additional options here, but at least on Mac, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I personally am gonna skip my audio input device. Next thing I'm gonna do is go to my audio output device. And I'm gonna choose from my Blackmagic ATEM switcher here, I'm gonna choose my Play Audio 12. Okay, so I chose my interface now. The next thing I wanna do is click on the output config option here. 
There's a couple settings that I want to mention that uh, are important to take a look at. So with output config selected, essentially what you can do here is choose between uh, having mono outputs available to route to and having stereo outputs available to route to. Now, personally, I typically just enable most of these to where, hey, I could have mono uh, options as well as stereo options. Um, uh, so I typically do this to where I have uh, av availability to all of them. Technically, if you do this, uh, you can experience higher CPU. It's going to drain your computer a little. I've never been in a scenario where my CPU has been so high that by me clicking and disabling these, it solved it, but just worth keeping in mind. So if you know you're only going to use six outputs, maybe just enable the six outputs. But I want to have the ability to route to all my uh, outputs, either as mono outputs or as stereo outputs. The other option we have here is the ability to name these. I personally don't do this because my setup and configuration changes so often that one and two isn't always the same thing. But let's say, for example, uh, that one and two was uh, click and then guide. OK, uh, so I could go and say, OK, click and, and guide there. Stereo could be click and guide. I'm going to leave that just so you could see what that looks like in the interface. I personally don't do this because, again, my setup changes so often that it is isn't always the same thing. But if you're going to be pretty consistent and want to make it easy on yourself, you could do this. Also, if your interface has a weird thing to where output one and two in Ableton is actually like three and four on the device, you could use this as an option to relabel that as well, too, which could be helpful and convenient. So now let's hit OK. Uh, next thing we want to talk about is setting our sample rate. Now, if your interface allows it, you can configure your sample rate directly in live. The Play Audio 12, I have to go to Oracle for X series to adjust that. But if your audio interface allows you to adjust it in Ableton Live, then you can choose uh, your um, sample rate directly from here. Um, I will say as a note, mine is set to 44.1. 44.1 is perfectly fine for live performance. If you happen to be doing a a multi-track recording of this and it's going to be released you know for a national release on a cd maybe you bump up to 96k uh, for the best quality but there's not a single soul in the entire planet that can hear the difference between 44.1 and 96k when an entire band is playing on top of it in a giant coliseum so just leave it to 44.1 and and call it a day uh default sample rank pitch conversion i always leave this set to high quality again i guess in theory high quality could cause some cpu issues i've never had issues with CPU that it's so high that when I turn this off, it fixes it. So just leave it alone and leave it turned on. Next thing we want to talk about is buffer size here. Um, I typically leave this set to 512. If you are playing keys live or you're experiencing latency, which is the delay between when you hit something and you hear it, or the delay between when you hit repeat on your MIDI controller and it repeats, then reduce that to uh, the lowest possible latency, uh, the lowest possible buffer size. See if that improves your latency to where it's less. But if you start to hear crackles and pops in your audio, then slowly raise that up until it goes away. Right. So again, 512 seems to be a good equal medium. If you're playing keys with it, you're going to have to drop it down a little lower. Um, but with that, buffer size is set. Let's talk about actually routing uh, outputs uh, to our interface. So I'm going to close preferences now. Um, let's go into some of these group tracks here. And I'll show you how to just route directly to your interface. And then I'll show you how I normally route to my interface. So I could go into this song here. And let's take our synth loop. And I could say audio 2. And if I choose external out, then external out is whatever interface I de uh, defined in preferences. So I'm not going to see audio to play audio 12 there, but I'm going to see audio to external out, which I know is the play audio 12 because that's what's selected in this audio output device. OK, so uh, I'm going to go to external out here and then I'm going to choose which of my outputs I want. So remember how I named this. This is what this would show up in live again. It's a great useful feature. I just change it so often that it doesn't make sense for me to go rewrite this and change it uh, every single time. So um, for me, I would just say one, two, three, four. So if I want this to be a stereo output, I would say one and two. If I want it to be a mono output, like say click, then I would uh, select one and send that to guide. Now, so that's what you would do. You would go through your individual tracks and route them directly to your interface. But here's what I do. And I've got some videos where I do this um, a little more in depth. And so I'll link to those so you can see it. But I use sends and returns. So what you'll see specifically in my setup, it's e each of my songs here is routed audio to sends only. And then over here in these return tracks, uh, I have return tracks set up for uh, four different groupings and four different pairs. Then what I do in my template, and I only do this one time 
time. That way I never have to touch it again. I never have to use it again or set it up again is I go audio two, and I do external out on this. And then this is where I choose my outputs. Okay. External out. And I set this to three and four external out. And I would set this to, let's say five and six this time. And then finally external out and let's set this to seven and eight. Okay. So I use sends and returns to provide some flexibility for this. And one of the things that's really great about this is if I go into a setup and scenario where I'm only using two outputs, then instead of redoing routing for all of my songs, all I do is take my four return tracks. I leave it on external out and I just set it to one and two and let's adjust all those. And that changes for all my return tracks. And it's one simple change and allows me to work really, really quickly. Now, if you want some resources and tools that uh, help you work quickly and efficiently in Ableton Live, uh, particularly if you're running tracks in Ableton Live, then head to fromstudiotostage.com slash free. And there I've got tons of free resources for running tracks in Ableton Live, free resources that were created from products and resources that cost hundreds of dollars that are free to you. Uh, everything from click tracks to time code files, everything in between. Um, I also have an output routing guide, which will help you figure out how many return tracks it have, how to route things. Everything you need to get started is there in one place. Uh, from studio to stage.com slash free. All you have to do is share your name and email, and I will send you all the content that you find there. Now, if you like videos like this, I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central here on the YouTube channel. Do me a favor though, in order to see it, you've got to hit subscribe, then hit the bell icon, and you'll be notified when I post a new video every day at 10, 10 a.m. Central. And when you get the notification, look if it makes sense, click through and watch it. If not, then consider joining me on the next one. I hope to see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central, if not tomorrow, the day after that, uh, but sometime in the future in a future tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.